Hey guys, I just want to talk a little bit more about the atonement, and since this is kind of an interesting subject on me, I might come back to this a lot and just go over a little bit more and more as I'm finding things out. So looking at this little sidebar thing here on the Wikipedia, and it has some general types of the atonement and theories. And the types, you know, there's limited and unlimited, which uh, limited is basically the Calvinist view that only those who God chose uh, get the benefits from the atonement, uh, as opposed to those who ch God chooses to go to hell, which is absolutely wrong. And we see the Reformed and the Scholastic uh, fall under that, and I don't know what Scholastic is. It's kind of interesting, their categories and how they come up with stuff here. And Wikipedia is a good source, but it isn't, you know. It's uh, everybody's adding to the articles, and uh, I mean, it's very helpful overall, but then, I don't know. Anyways, the Unlimited... Uh, Unlimited atonement basically uh, means that any person, any individual who you know chooses to believe in Jesus gets the benefits, and there's no limitations from God. Uh, it's just based on the fact of you know, whoever believes, which could be anybody, and you know, and it teaches that. God didn't particularly choose people to go to hell, specifically. Um, so, <clears throat> I don't know why these things pop up, but... And then there's also Universal Atonement, which isn't on here. And uh, uh, Well, Unlimited could be seen as Universal, but then there's like a grander Universal where like everybody... Uh, is saved because of the atonement, <laughs> which is false, also. Uh, and then there's the different theories, and I don't know about all these, but I think the, the Christus Victor, Christus Victor theory is kind of one of the most maybe plain ones that teaches basically that when Jesus died on the cross, he defeated you know the powers of evil, and he defeated Satan and death. Um... And so, I think that some of these theories, they start off kind of basic, and they were kind of built upon each other. The governmental says Armenian. I don't really know a lot about this, except for I think that it's wrong. I know that, I talked about it a little bit before, that uh, Jesse Morrell, I think, believes the governmental atonement, which comes from Charles Finney also. Charles Finney believes that. And I don't remember much about it, but... Uh, I was looking at it here, I think, actually. No, I was on another page. But, uh... Something like... It didn't really... It's not that he was, like, a substitute for sinners. He was, uh... It's kind of like his crucifixion was just for show, or something. Like, it didn't really mean much. I think that's kind of what the moral influence is, too. Uh, the moral influence here says the moral influence or example theory of the atonement holds that the purpose and work of Jesus Christ was to bring positive moral change to humanity. So this moral change came through the teachings and example of Jesus, uh, the Christian movement he founded. So this, so it's, so the death on the cross was just supposed to be a positive, to bring a positive moral change to humanity. But I think there's more to it than that, uh, you know, that, that he actually, uh, there was actually something that happened there where he substituted us for us. The penal substitution, which is one of the most common ones, I think, most common believed ones, which is what I'm going against now that I'm saying I don't really agree with this, that Jesus basically says that Jesus took our punishment, uh, that sinners are deserving of punishment, and Jesus took our place and suffered that punishment for us so we don't have to, and then we have his righteousness. Ransom theory, I'm not really sure. I think this might be uh, an idea that's within these other ideas. Recapitulation. 
doesn't say much about that one. I don't know about that one. So, so ransom theory is one of the main doctrines in Western Christian theology relating to the meaning and effect of Jesus, the death of Jesus Christ, the first major theory of the atonement, the ransom theory of atonement originated in the early church. So um, then there's satisfaction, which I've talked about, which mostly Catholics believe. And I'm, kind of, I'm really interested in that theory. And substitutionary. Um, I know that the penal substitution and the satisfaction are both substitutionary atonements. Um, so there's that. I was looking at some stuff, and this is interesting too, where uh, Martin Luther, this is a quote from... Well, this is someone saying something that Luther said. This might not be a direct quote from Luther. Maybe it is. I don't know. But it says, Luther expressed this as follows. On the cross, Christ is now the greatest robber of all, the greatest murderer, adulterer, and thief, the greatest des desecrator of temples and blasphemer. The world has seen none greater than this. So... Uh, Martin Luther believed in the penal substitution uh, atonement, and which basically makes Christ a sinner. And Martin Luther basically directly said that, that Christ is the greatest robber of all, the greatest murderer of all. That's not what I believe. I don't think that's what the Bible teaches. I think it's the complete opposite, that Jesus Christ was sinless, God in the flesh. He lived a perfect life. Uh, so this is blasphemy, I think, to say that Christ was the greatest murderer of all. Um, so I think the penal substitution atonement is flawed. And I was going to kind of have this picture idea. It's just kind of an idea that I've started, but I don't know if it's going to help anybody really, or even if it's, you know, the penal substitutionary is kind of like, the sinners are sinners are guilty and they're worthy of punishment, worthy of death and hell. And so this is like a bullet. So I was going to simulate it with a bullet. And for the penal substitution, it's like Jesus stepped in our place. Like he stepped in front of the bullet and took the bullet and died for us so that we don't have to suffer that. And then uh, we get the gain from that. And then the satisfaction theory of Tom, it's like Jesus lived a perfect life. And because he lived a perfect life, then there's like, there's like no need for the punishment. And so we vicariously uh, get that benefit through Jesus as if, you know, as if we were sinless. Uh, we are righteous through Christ's death. So, I need to look into this a lot more, and, you know, a lot more will be put into it, better videos in the future. But, what are your thoughts on that? Thank you, God bless.